Hey everyone, welcome to the next tutorial. In this one, we're going to be getting a collision detection working on our player and the enemies. Uh, and we're also going to, the first thing I'm gonna do actually is get the enemies to explode. We'll work on that first. So I'll get the enemies to explode when we actually uh, kill them. So let's go ahead and start that. So what I've done was uh, I have, I downloaded all the sprites for explosions uh, from Galaga. You can't really see them on these pictures here because they have a lot of transparency in them, but this, they're, it's five frames. So there's five frames of animation for an explosion uh, that it needs to go through. And we're gonna add all that to our enemy class right here. So the first thing I need to do is actually, uh, I need to import all the images into the enemy class. So uh, the variable that's called self.image is always the current image of the object. So you can't rename that. Whatever this variable is, that's the current image it's gonna show on screen. So what I'm gonna do is make, uh, uh, let's see what the, there's multiple ways you can do this, but I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna make a variable called explosion or we'll do this actually img explosion zero one so this will be the first frame of animation for the explosion and this is going to be quite a lot of lines of code because i've got to import every image and then we also have to do that same transform to get it scaled up for our game so pygame.image.load and it if you're using your own images for the game, you may not have to, to transform them to make them bigger, but my images just so happen to be really small, so I've got to scale them up. So pygame.image.load and the file is explosion01.png. And it's got uh, transparency, so we'll do convert alpha. And what I'm actually gonna do is just copy this line and paste it. Uh, so we have five of them because the only thing that's going to change is I got frame two, frame three, frame four, and frame five. And I'll do the same thing for the uh, for the file names because they're all named the same thing. They just have a different number. And in between each one of these, I'm going to uh, scale each one of them. So we'll do self dot image explosion one equals pi game dot transform dot scale and it's what are we scaling well we're scaling the image uh, explosion zero one and what are you scaling it to it requires a tuple of the width and height so we're going to do self dot image explosion one dot get width multiply it by three and self dot image explosion underscore one dot get height multiplied by three and I can pretty much do the same thing I can just copy this and paste it after each line because we're gonna do the same thing after each image and I just changed the numbers so that'll be image two I need to put a two there a two there and a two there and we'll go down here and do the same thing and make it three uh, Three, three, three. Just do this. Four, 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 and four. And that's five, five, not five, and five. Uh, just to make sure our game doesn't crash, I'm gonna load it up. It's still working the same. All right, cool. Just make sure I didn't typo anything. Um, right after we import all those images, I'm gonna make another variable called, it's gonna be A-N-I-M for animation, and it's gonna be called animation explosion. So A-N-I-M underscore explosion. And that's gonna be a list of every single one of these uh, explosion images. Cause what we're gonna do is loop through each one and uh, change the image every frame. So we have self dot image explosion zero one we'll just copy all that and then paste the right numbers in so we have every explosion image in a list that we're going to loop through so i think how we said we wanted to do this is if the enemy's hp equals zero then run the destroy method and the destroy method is going to have all the logic for changing uh the current image 
So, uh, the best way to do this is probably I'm going to make a variable called animation index and it's going to be zero. And this is going to um, this is going to be the current like it, so if we're in animate the animation explosion list and we're at index zero, it's going to be the first frame. And then if we raise that, it'll go to the second image and the third image and the fourth image and the fifth image. So this is just an index value to keep track of where we are in this list. Uh, but we also need to find out how many frames, because if we go outside that list, if, say if we grab the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if we go to 5, it's going to throw an index out of range error because there's no sixth animation, and it's going to try and go too far. So what I'm going to do is when we run the destroy method, we need to find out how many frames of animation are in that explosion list. So we'll do... Um, uh, max index equals the length of self it's going to equal the length of the animation index minus one so what that's going to do is uh, why is it complaining about this that returned an integer uh, max index equals length of the animation index oh I'm an animation explosion not animation index yeah there we go so what this is doing is it's going up here and grabbing this list and it's returning the number of things inside it. So there's three, four, five. And I've got to subtract one from it because remember an index always starts at zero. So four is actually the last thing in it. So I can't say five because five would be the sixth thing in it. So we have this thing called max index. All right. So what we want to do right when the destroy method is ran, we want to do self.image because we're going to change the, the character's image. Self.image equals... Uh, self dot animation explosion so it's going to go in that explosion ish, uh, list that contains all the images of the explosion and we're going to grab the self dot animation index so this will right now this will be zero it's going to grab the first thing in it um, and then we're going to do self dot animation index plus equals one so then the next time it goes through it, it'll, it'll grab the uh, it'll grab the second animation in it. And the next time it'll grab the third animation. But now we need to we need to check. We need to make sure we're not um, uh, we're not going out of range. We're not going to like a sixth animation that doesn't exist. So give me a second to think of the best way to probably do this. Um, let's encapsulate all this in an if statement. So if self dot animation index is greater than the max index. Uh, at that point we want to do self.kill because we're at the end of the animation so then we can do self.kill else we can do all this all right so let's go through this line by line so we're getting the total number of animations uh, and assigning that to the max index so this is the number of uh, frames if the current frame is greater than the max index mean if it means if it's now out of range it'll go ahead and just kill the object else it assigns the image the current uh, animation image and then after that it will uh, increase the index by one i think this should work all right so it's working kinda it's drawing an image there but it's not draw it's not animating so, uh, and that's because we're only running, oh, it's because we're only running this destroy method once, so we need to actually keep looping through this. Uh, the best way to do that, there's actually a, a number of ways we can do that. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's make a variable. This is the fastest way I can think of to do this. Again, there's better ways and faster, and well, there's just better ways to do this, and we're going to do those later in the next uh, video series. But for right now, we're going to make a variable called self is destroyed, and we're going to set it to false. And when this turns true, uh, it's going to run all the destroyed code. So in our update function, we'll do if self dot is destroyed, we'll run all this code. That way, it'll get ran every single update function, but only if the current flag is set for is destroyed 
And right here, we'll just, it, for the destroy method, uh, we actually don't even need this anymore. We can erase it, and instead of running the destroyed method, we can just set self is destroyed to true. That way now, uh, on the update, it'll go in here and start running all this. So it's working, but as you can see, uh, five frames of animation is really fast. So what you would actually want to do is we want it to kind of each frame, each uh, image to stay for like two or three frames. So let's figure out how to do that. Um, uh, so right here where we got the animation index variable, let's do uh, self dot frame length. And this is how long each frame, will, each image will stay on the screen before it switches to another. So we'll just say three for right now. That way it doesn't go through it real quick. It's like, do, do, do. Like, it, you'll actually be able to see it. So uh, if self.destroyed, um, let's see where we need to put it. It'll be in the self.destroyed block right here. Uh, and it'll be after the max index. It'll be somewhere in here. And so it's going to be in this else block. So if uh, self dot what did we call it frame buffer frame length we'll do if self dot frame length equals zero it'll be like a timer so it'll count down three frames when it does it it changes the image it'll count down another three frames and then change the image so if the frame length equals zero go ahead and swap the image out else frame length minus equals one and once we change the image, we need to set self.frame length back to three again. So this should work. It should each picture should stay for three frames. Yeah, that's working. But see how they're kind of off center. Uh, one way we can do that, uh, that we can fix that, is um. Because it's drawing the top left of each frame to the top left of the uh, the actual enemy, and my explosion images are actually pretty big. They're bigger than the explosion itself. So let's see if we can figure out a way to center it. Um, let's go back to enemy.py, and this may take just a second. Um, because we're going to actually change the rect properties of the enemy. Uh, do, 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 do. So let's do this self. So right when the enemy is destroyed, we actually need to change its rect properties a bit to move them up left. That way the big explosion uh, square that I have actually moves in the right spot. So self.rect.x. Uh, let's... Um, so it's... It's rectangular x coordinate is going to equal its rectangular x coordinate, but we're going to subtract some stuff from it. So let's subtract like 20. And let's also do the same with y. But y we're wanting to subtract. Oh, it's a square. So let's just subtract 20 from that as well. So let's see how this. We can tweak those numbers. Oh, that, uh. That's making him move. Uh, oh, because it's looping through it every time. So we actually. It's what it's doing. It's subtracting 20 every frame and causing it to fly off the screen. So let's take that off, and we actually need to do that right here where we set, because this get hit method only runs a. Uh... Oh, we will need a destroy method because this is going to happen every time. No, it's only going to happen when his HP gets to zero. So this will only run once. Got scared for a second. All right. Ooh, but it's actually, you, you actually, I don't know if you paid attention, but if you saw the enemy image move up and then it changed his and his uh, image to the explosion. So what we want to do here is self.image equals self.image, uh, or sorry, self.animation explosion self dot image what I call it animation index animation index 
So right when right when we set the is destroyed value, we, we actually need to change his animation uh, right there. Uh, do, 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 do. And this should work. There we go. And it's still looking a bit, it's a bit off center. So let's tweak those numbers. I need to move it probably 30 and 30. Maybe 35. That looks a bit too much, so 32. And again, you can tweak these numbers all day long, but this this one actually, 32 should be good. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, but that frame length, let's change it to two. I think three each frame stays too long. And we also need to change it down here. Yeah. Oh, it's good. All right, uh, so in the next video, uh, I know I said we'd probably do it in this video, but uh, it's going a little long. I didn't realize this would take, well, I knew this would take this long, but uh, in the next video, we'll get collision detection working on the player, and the player will have a different type of explosion image if his health gets too low. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys in the next video.